Comparing your SCP-3 with oxygen to an oxygen-shipped car is quite simple, and it works the same on the SCP-1 with the oxygen cartridge, an SCP-2 with the oxygen cartridge, or the SCP-3. The only difference between how these work is how much you see on the display. There's only one seven-segment display for the cartridge, whereas there's two seven-segment displays for the SCP-3, which makes it a little bit easier. Because this is the currently made and sold controller and what most people are going to be getting into oxygen with, I'm going to start with the SCP-3, and then I'll kind of show the differences on how it works with the older uh, controllers and cartridges. But, it, but it's done essentially the same way. So the first thing you do is turn your controller on. And after it's done showing its information, to set what you want to what you want your car ID to be, you're using the green knob as the tens place of the car ID and the blue knob as the ones place of the car ID. Uh, when you press the brake button, it'll actually show you what the controller was previously programmed with. So I'm hold that button, it says track 1, 19 is what this was previously control, uh, programmed with to a car. Now if I hold the down arrow button at the same time, it'll show me what it's going to program the next car to based on the knob positions. These knobs are in the same positions they were when I set it to 19. So if I turn the green knob down to nothing, you'll see that it switches to 9. All right, so turn the green knob down to zero basically and so now it's car nine so if I were to program a car to this controller now it would be car nine track one car nine the blue knob controls the one place so if I turn that down to two it'll show track one well the numbers on the numbers on the knob aren't uh, always spot on so make sure it's displaying the number that you want it to be before you do the programming so if I set it down a little bit more I get one in fact, if I set it down to zero, it'll say track one, dash. And you can actually program a car to dash or to zero, but it won't, you won't be able to drive it. So it's got to be at least one. So we'll set that back up to one. Uh, and now if I wanted to program a car to track one, car one, I would pull the trigger. And it would do that display to indicate that it's programming or wants to program. And in this case, I'll go ahead and program this car by putting it on the track. And the display goes away. And the, the car is now under the control of this controller. Now the only difference between how that works and how the SCP-1 and 2 work is how much you can see on the display at once. So I'm going to turn this controller off. Because if I'm programming the same car to a different controller, the controller I was using needs to be turned off. And there's ways to get around that, but generally speaking, just make sure when you're programming a car that the controller that was previously programmed to that car is turned off. So I'm going to program this same car to a different ID on my SCP-2 with oxygen cartridge. In this case, I've installed a, a battery into the handle so I don't have any cables and a switch to control the power. So I just flip that switch to turn it on. and same as before, if I press brake, it'll display what this controller was previously set to. In this case, track 1, car 14. And I know it's 14 because there's a little dot right there at the bottom right corner of the display. That dot indicates add 10. So if I want to program it to a different uh, car ID, I do just like before and hold the down arrow button at the same time. In this case, I'll just hit it with the back of my thumb. So I'm holding both of these buttons down with my thumb. And the display shows T1, car 14, because the knobs are still where they were the last time I did this. But I'll go ahead and turn that down to zero. So it's going to be car 4. See, there's no more dot at the corner. So I know it's whatever this is, car ID, right? So if I turn the blue knob down, it'll be T1, C1, or I can set it to C9. T1, C9, or if I want to go to 20, then I just turn the green knob all the way up, and then that's what it'll display. On the SCP-3, it would show 2-0, but for this single display, it shows that 11 dot, which means 20. And I could turn the blue knob wherever I want to, it's always going to be 
car 20. So I'll go ahead and program this to be car 20. Uh, when you pull the trigger on the SCP-1 or 2 with the cartridge in it, uh, it'll does a little spinny uh, indicator to, sh to show that it's in programming mode. And then as soon as the programming has completed, that stops. And then that quickly flashing LED means that it's in communication with the car. So this is now car ID 20. So to recap, press and hold the brake button to see what the handle was paired to, what car ID and track ID the handle was paired to the last time. And press and hold the, the circle button and the down arrow button to see what you're going to program the car to this time. T1, C, let's go ahead and change that, I'll do 14, there we go, 4 dot means 14. And then, when you're ready, pull the trigger, put the car on the track, pairing is complete, quickly flashing light means you're good to go. If you have any questions, by all means, post a comment and I'll try to help.